Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild podcast. I'm 50% of the wildness on the show. <laughs> Your co-host Tim Chelswick. Let's not lie, you're all 100% of the wild. You're the cra- <laughs> craziest guy I ever met. I'll flip this table over and prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Mad Drury. He's the, I mean, 50% at least. I, I can't live up to your standards, I don't think. <laughs> well, so we've got 50%, 50%, and then next to me is the other 50%. No, he's 350. That's, he's the get 350. what I'm doing here. I nice. do. Yeah. <laughs> ben Frank from Winchester Ammo, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you. Last week we had Jason Gilbertson on talking about the 350 legend, and we were kind of letting the cat out of the bag at that point. And really, SHOT Show was when you guys launched this to the public. We've known about it internally for a little bit and got to hunt with the, the cartridge this uh, this past fall. Yeah, I think it was back in August or September. You guys had a, a Winchester Summit there over in Alton, Illinois, where your headquarters is on the ammunition side. And a big group of us came in, and it was pretty cool. We sat in it was kind of a closed door deal, and, and we had to yeah, sign the waivers. And <laughs> it, literally, they had a box, a Winchester box, and I don't know if we have one here, but it said Top Secret on it. I That's think, cool. Or something like that. It, it, yeah, it, it was pretty exciting because you guys were one of the first ones to even know about it. And, yeah. What's nice is we can kick it off of folks who are going to get to use it and mm-hmm. see your excitement. And for us, it's just like the cat's sort of out of the bag, but it's one of those things where you just you want to tell so many people. Yeah, you just gotta yeah. Wait, you know? So a, a couple things before we kind of get too deep into it. So for, first of all, at that meeting, you know, you guys took us through all the velocities and you took us through kind of what the performance would be mm-hmm. like. And I think you even – uh, shot around out on the range and showed us what it did to the ballistic gel. And, you know, for, you know, average hunter, I was, you know, okay, this is cool. It was neat, but I didn't really understand what it meant because we didn't, we didn't get to shoot them yep. there. And then uh, we were lucky enough to be one of a, you know, a handful of groups that got an XPR that could, could shoot the 350. And, uh, and, and Jason Gilbertson came out to deer season with us and, and mm-hmm. during the Missouri firearm season and Terry shot it. I shot it like to actually get to shoot it there at the range. It, I tell you what, man, it's no joke. Like there's little to no recoil. It's deadly accurate, which, you know, the XPR gun was, was part of that that mm-hmm. you know uh, equation obviously but um to so to go get to shoot it i had a much different feeling after we shot it than i did sitting in that uh conference room back in august or september sure. it was just like you know okay it's neat that's cool a new cartridge didn't really understand what that might have meant uh but then you get to shoot it and experience it and it was pretty awesome and um so when i read some of the comments on our youtube post that we had you know a few weeks back and it, and it had a ton of uh, it's up to like 150,000 views so it really it, it, caught fire it, it did and it was um, it was us on the range that day at, at dad's farm. And then it showed some of the success that our group had with it. So dad killed a, a nice buck with it. And then we gave it to Mark and his group. And I think they killed a couple deer in Texas and a couple deer in Iowa. Yeah. And that was the, that was during the, I believe the second shotgun season there in Iowa. And that was the other cool part about it is that it it's, legal up there and it kind of changes the game for a lot of those guys because mark was always using his muzzle loaders during that season mm-hmm. and um it, it it just not not to say muzzle loading hunting's hard but it does kind of it's make it tool a, a, a lot different mm-hmm. you know and and it's so accurate and just the performance that we saw out of all of those hits we're believers so you know we we wanted to have ben over and kind of share some of the misnomers that might be out there and kind of shed some light on the subject well i mean we appreciate you guys letting us be here because this is a great place and avenue to be able to reach out to folks who are wanting to use this but to your point you really don't get a full appreciation of it until you shoot it so i'd i'd encourage anybody who has a chance once those rifles and the ammo are available to go out and shoot it because you know we come up with claims and we come up with um, just basically anecdotal things of how it compares to existing cartridges the Mm -hmm. reason we do that is because without actually shooting it 
it's very difficult for someone to understand what it is. You know, is this a thousand yard cartridge? Is this a, you know, what is its capabilities? And if you talk about it, you know, comparing it to existing cartridges that folks are used to, then maybe you kind of get them a feel of what this thing is. And I think we've done that, but again, we've got a lot of questions about it and where we came up with some of those numbers. So, you know, I'm super excited that we get to talk about it because then it kind of dispels any of those questions. And to your point, Matt, like when you actually shoot it it dispels a lot like i've actually shot it as well i've shot it i shot a whitetail in kansas with it and it was awesome i mean Hmm. to your point the accuracy is one of the first things that i noticed that you know we're we're shooting sub one inch groups at 100 yards you know that's 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 a lot of fun when you can shoot like that in confidence so and and so dad shot it on the range and he was you know maybe off uh an inch or so from where he was aiming and then i i took it and i shot it and i literally touched where yeah. his so his he, bullet entry hole was there on the target, and it's like that doesn't we're not that great a shooter. So <laughs> we I looked at dad. That's what like, a real shooter. I was like, all right, we're done here. <laughs> like, this doesn't happen to us. So I don't attribute it to the shooters. I attribute it to the gun and the ammo. Well, it's a little bit of both, I'm sure. But you know, when it comes to accuracy, you know, some of that also is that recoil that you feel and you, and you don't really you, we can talk mm-hmm. about recoil and how it compares and we will to like other ca- other cartridges and calibers but the fact that when you shoot it and you're like wow that's so manageable there's yeah. nothing to it yeah the next shot you're you're not sitting there like i've, I've shot all kinds of different cartridges mm-hmm. doing getting to do what we get to do which is great um but you shoot a 300 win mag after you shoot <laughs> a few of them without any you know lead sled or anything like, yeah. thing like that you inherently may start to get a flinch. Get a flinch. Yeah. Thinking about there, that next. Yeah, there's yeah. there's none of that. I mean, we had some um, media folks with us, some writers that were with us, and that was one of the very first things that they said as well. They're like, you know, you, you never know. The first time you pull the trigger on something sure. that's never been shot by you before, you're kind of like, okay, what's going to happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they shoot it, and they're like, okay, I don't I don't really need any bags. I don't. You know, <clears> let's get cool. going here. You know, yeah. and they start shooting a bunch more, and you can tell. First of all, they just want to keep shooting it because it's fun. Yeah. So it's 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 been a fun slash also just effective cartridge you guys have done a great job of putting it on whitetail because you you know we can shoot gel like we did at that uh range day up until that point you know we'd only shot gel um but then when we got this to this fall Mm -hmm. we were able to get ammo out there and you guys shooting stuff i mean i think we killed over 30 whitetails with it so far um and we'll continue to do more we've killed a few hogs with it yeah it's just flat out performing this isn't a 500 yard cartridge though you know that's one of the things this this is 250 yards and in and that's really from from the get-go where we designed it you know and i think majority of our shots you know they were all over the place but in that hundred yard mm-hmm. range and a typical midwestern scenario. yeah and uh and i think mark actually shot his texas deer i think it was like 240 roughly 236 240 mm-hmm. and um it dropped it in his tracks you oh, know I mean, and most of the deer did i actually only i think two deer ran one was dad's it went like 40 yards and, and tipped over and the other one was tom gallagher's and it ran maybe 80 yards downhill you, you know so it literally every other shot dropped dropped yeah. in his tracks yeah. so i mean knock on wood um, all of them have been one shot scenarios, mm-hmm. which is, which is great. Now that also plays into good shot placement. Of yeah. course. Again, good shot placement comes from an accurate cartridge. So, um, but what, you know, what we see and what we get when we talk to folks is, you know, Hey, how far is it that you're shooting whitetail at, you know, and most folks are within that 250 yards and in, yeah, there's going to mm-hmm. be other folks who are going to be shooting them further, but you know, particularly in the Midwest, um, you're going to c- encounter a lot of situations that are under 250 yards. And yeah. I mean, it's fantastic within that range. So, yeah, you guys didn't necessarily come out with this, um, t- with the Western hunter in mind, probably. I mean, I guess they can, but it's, it's more of a Midwestern, you know, East, Northeast, Southeast type of a deal. You know, that's a good way to kind of segue into how, how we really came up with the 350. So, you know, when we're looking at, we're, we're sitting in our, one of our conference rooms and in our conference rooms, we have one of these big bullet boards. It's got every cartridge that we've ever built. Probably anybody board. else has ever built. Yeah. Bullet board. So you've got really everything there and you see it every day. We look at it, but we're sitting there thinking, well, what, what's, what do we need today? What do folks something right here on this line? Yeah. And, <laughs> and then you also look at it. It's like, 
every everything changes you know technology mm-hmm. changes yeah. bullet technologies change and you know for us like 450 bushmaster for instance has continued to grow in popularity and we're like well you know why is that growing well you know those straight wall state folks folks wanting to shoot a whitetail in those states mm-hmm. maybe then also taking those things down into the southern states and shooting hogs with it and we're like well there's not a lot of options for those folks you know and in, in those states it's 450 bushmaster or a lot of older cartridges or maybe some wildcat stuff so it just so happens that in a lot of those states, the rules are a 357 bullet or larger. Well, 357 is a nine millimeter bullet, basically. Yeah. Um, and we make a lot of nine millimeter bullets. We're pretty good at it. And then it just so happens that that nine millimeter bullet will fit into a 223 roughly shell case um, without necking it down. So we're like, well, we do a pretty good job of making those too. So if we put those mm-hmm. two together, now all of a sudden we check that box for those folks in those states. It's a straight wall cartridge um, that's large enough di- bullet diameter that's going to be very effective on whitetail. So that's kind of where we started with it. Shell cases aren't exactly a 223. We've made some modifications to it to make it work properly in a rifle. Mm-hmm. Bullets are all developed specifically for the 350 Legend rifle. They're not 9 millimeter bullets. We actually made uh, full developments on all those bullets. Um, but, you know, another piece of that is just looking at how is that thing going to check the box of recoil um that's where i think it starts to translate in recoil and affordability where it translates mm-hmm. into not only those midwestern state folks when you start talking about affordability and you start talking about the accuracy of that it starts in those straight wall areas because it, it checks those boxes <clears throat> But that's going to be a cartridge that could be used anywhere. You know, it's obviously legal in any state that can have a rifle. And we get a lot of questions about, well, if I'm recoil sensitive, what's my best option to go kill a whitetail? Mm-hmm. 243 is great. Yep. 3030 is great. Yeah. There's a lot of great ones out there. This is another option out there, another tool that folks can go after that will effectively kill a whitetail at 250 yards and in that's going to be, like you said, very mild shooting, very comfortable to shoot and affordable. I mean, we're talking about, this is another question that folks have brought up, like what's what's the retail price? And we don't set retail prices, but we also recognize where they'll probably fall. Mm -hmm. And our PowerPoint product, which PowerPoint's been around for a long time, you know, that lead nose bullet there. it's going to be retailing basically the same price as 223 so probably around 17 to 20 dollars mm-hmm. a box depending upon where you shop 180 grain bullet uh, then you got sorry about that then you got deer season 150 grain bullet that's going to be again uh, very similar to our 223 deer season product uh, in terms of price so it's probably going to be anywhere between 20 to 24 bucks a box sure that's right on top of 223 and then finally you've got the fmj and the fmj here that 145 grain fmj you're talking around 10 to 12 dollars a box of 20 which very affordable you can go out and shoot a lot at the range get comfortable with your rifle so you can go out and hunt with it and you know not all cartridges are capable of providing someone with a 10 to 12 dollar a box ammo for the range and you know We don't talk about that a lot. Like when we go to the SHOT Show, we talk about a lot of the specs, a lot of the um, technical features, the energy, the velocity, the knockdown power and all that. But truly what ends up getting folks out there and having fun with it is it can't smack the heck out of them. Yeah. And it can't smack the heck out of their wallet. You know, it's got to be something that they – I can go out and shoot on it every weekend. I can have my kids shoot it. Or I was going to say, this is a pretty kid-friendly, oh, you, know, yeah. um, you know, if you're getting, you know, maybe you went to your wife hunting or whatever. This, there's literally, there was like no recoil to it. I mean, it was fun to shoot. Yeah, I mean, if for me, you know, I live in Illinois, so unfortunately I don't get to use it. Yeah. Um, maybe one day we'll go to the straight wall scenario mm-hmm. as well, which would be great. But this would be the first thing that I'd buy for my son. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because we developed it. I mean, I've shot it now, and even me, I mean, I – I don't, I don't enjoy shooting 300 wind mag. I, I think they're awesome because the capabilities yeah. are there for long range and they really can put a lot of energy on target. But for where I hunt in Illinois, if I was to ever be able to do that, you know, those folks in Ohio and those folks in Iowa, you know, most of the, most of their shots are coming within that range. And it's mm-hmm, just such yeah. a comfortable shooting cartridge that, that that would be something particularly for, for those recoil sensors. We had uh, one of our Catch Dream kids in camp at Mark's place this year, Luke, and he used it. And, and um, you know, he's 
I probably 16, like 17 that, yeah. years old, and he, he used it, and uh, I mean, he dropped his in his tracks. So mm-hmm. it's just it's a it's a cool cartridge, and I mean, yeah, I understand people that may have not shot it or understand why you guys developed it, but you just kind of explained why the why you developed it. Um, do you, we want to tackle some of the questions that we were seeing on? on the video that we had posted a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, so, that, and, and that's kind of the <clears throat> sort of the cuts both ways with the internet is that you get a ton of information, but you really have to wade through to make sure what you're getting is, <clears throat> is accurate. And, you know, just going through the comments on our YouTube video, there's a lot of, a lot of folks with very strong opinions and well, that's the internet. <laughs> really I, I think that too. And I think it's a cool piece of this industry is that people are very passionate about, they are. Oh, yeah. about cartridges because there's a lot of history in it, you know? And the thing of it is there's, there's so many things that have been built over time. Some have come, some have gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get these, you get people talking about those old cartridges, which is kind of cool because then it brings up, I mean, we start doing all kinds of, not that we didn't do searches before, but you start really digging into the history behind where some of them came from. Cause you're thinking, well, okay, that, that might've existed, but where did it go and why did it disappear? And again, we talk about things like technology has changed. You know, I, I look at, even if you go to like nine millimeter, like pistol, for mm-hmm. instance, you know, it used to be 40 cal was what every law enforcement agency used. And now you start seeing them transition back to nine millimeter yeah. because of recoil, you know, diff- different reasons. But the main reason they're able to do that is technology and bullets, you know, not just us, but all, almost everyone throughout the energy industry is up their game. Mm-hmm. Um, and so same with whitetail loads, same with, same with elk, same with all those things. There's been a lot of, you know, things that have happened in the last heck, even just 15 years that sure. makes a lot of things more capable of, you know, being like this cartridge, for instance, you know, if you go back 25, 30 years, there's no 357 caliber bullets that can do what these bullets can do. Hmm. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a cool time to be out in the woods with different stuff yeah. because you got a lot of different options. Well, I, and one of the things I know that, that folks were, are always skeptical about a new cartridge that comes out is, if I'm an early adopter, am I going to get left high and dry if it doesn't catch on and I end up with a gun that, <laughs> that no longer is supported with, uh, with, with ammo for it? So where do you guys kind of fall in? Like, how do you determine what you're going to, what kind of cartridge you're going to put out there and then how you continue to support that? And that's, that's a good question. And I think that, you know, it always remains to be seen how many um, firearms manufacturers decide to build it how many Mm -hmm. ammunition because honestly we need more ammunition folks to eventually build it i will say that we've been approached by over two dozen different firearms manufacturers saying that they want to build it um Mm. as well as ammunition manufacturers asking us questions about it as well so that all bodes well um, particularly initially um again you 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 won't really know until you know a year or two down the road Mm -hmm. you know how many guns actually do come out um how many ammunition but for us from in terms of availability of ammo this one's an easy one for us, really. Like I said, we, we're great at building two, two, three. Plants already kind of working, <laughs> working yeah, on that. I mean, that's that's the that's the beauty of Those this. Specs. It's maybe like maybe <clears throat> the unfortunate thing because it's there's not a huge barrier for other ammunition folks to kind of get into doing it because mm-hmm. a lot of people make two, two, three, and a lot of people make nine millimeter bullets. Sure. They'll have to purpose build some bullets for it, so it'll take some time. Um, we've kind of already done that, so we're ahead of that curve, but. I don't anticipate this being one of those kind of things where you're not going to be able to find ammo simply because it's something that us and many other folks are making all yeah. the time. And I think Jason said that rifles will start hitting or the the actual platforms will start hitting the shells August or something. Is that Yeah, about the- that's around the time when the XPR should be hitting the shelves. You know, we'll actually start uh, producing ammunition here in the next couple months um, really to start just filling shelves with it so that mm-hmm. when the rifles are there, it's ready. But, you know, we should have a pretty big slug of product going out in April. Great. So, um, and, and we're, we're all definitely on track for that. And, you know, these are the first three products here that we're really going to focus on PowerPoint deer season and FMJ, but we will mm-hmm. have some other ones that probably roll out towards the end of the year, like a subsonic version, sure. a heavier weight bullet um, for those folks who maybe want to shoot suppressors. And um, it's like 265 grain bullet, um, should be very fun to shoot. Yeah, um, I shoot haven't shot any of that. that. I haven't shot any of that yet. And then we'll have some bonded bullets, uh, great for hogs as mm-hmm. well. 
Um, we'll continue to look at ways of expanding the line, but right now those are the three flagship products that okay. we're going to be working on. You know, one of the one of the common themes throughout the questions were claims about outperforming the 243. Mm-hmm. So, kind of what? How do you guys arrive at that, and what are some of the nuances within that? So, like I was saying, you know, what we tried to do was let's compare. How does this thing compare to existing cartridges that? folks are familiar with you know mm-hmm. 243 obviously a lot of i mean we sell a ton of 243 and our deer season product is um, a great product we get a lot of great feedback on it in 243 um, it's a much lighter weight bullet than you have with 350 um, where it really compared the comparison came in was with recoil so first off it's about 20 percent less recoil than a 243 mm-hmm. so again most folks assumed 243 to be a pretty mild recoil cartridge this is less than that less than a little yeah so you're trying to to, trying to convey that message the next message is how is it going to work on whitetail you know well the best part of it is is we have folks like the juries and us who have shot so many whitetails with it we know that it works Mm -hmm. it's not even really a question of whether or not it does or doesn't um at this point, though, it comes into that penetration claims that we have. So um, where that came from, on all of our claims that we that we made, we compared like bullets to like bullets. And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is we compared deer season products to deer season products. It wouldn't really be fair or it'd probably be confusing to compare like a solid copper bullet to a PowerPoint to a deer season. So yeah. let's take existing Winchester products that we know work and let's – compare those to the 350 legend and see how see how it pans out 243 does have more energy at 200 yards it starts out with a lot higher velocity Mm -hmm. um but it but the 350 has more penetration um you know with the design of the bullet the design of the 243 bullet when you compare those two you actually get about 20 percent more penetration um out of the 350 Mm -hmm. legend than you do 243 so you know Again, trying to compare those two, trying to show folks that, hey, this thing gets enough penetration. If you know that 243 can kill something, this thing's getting that penetration. There's slightly less energy, obviously, mm-hmm. because you're not starting with that velocity. But, you, you know, you have a lot less energy than a varmint bullet, too, and you're not going to shoot a deer with a varmint right. bullet. So right. it, it, energy can be um, slightly deceiving at times because, you know, for one, you know, you're, you're not – this bullet construction makes a mm-hmm. big deal big deal out when it comes to that. So Yeah. Well, and so you're talking about bullet construction, you talk about penetration. Let's talk about sectional density because that's a, that's an important component. You guys to... are getting deep now, man. I got to <laughs> step I, away gonna, from the I'm podcast. Gonna, I'm going to tell, tell you right now, sectional density for me, like that's, I was an engineer in my, you know, beginning of my yeah. career and I kind of removed that part of my brain and set it over here. And sectional density is kind of one of those things from where I gather it and from where I remember is that it's folks trying to determine whether or not there's enough there to kill whitetail and the bottom line is like i said we've we've killed deer out to 250 yards and in and had zero issues with it and you know when we have done all of our gel testing we developed these bullets to expand at those ranges so we know that they work regardless of what the sectional density is rather like rather than getting an argument about Mm -hmm. any of that kind of personally i don't even really have that much information about sectional density i sure i just have real world knowledge of how it's performed Tim, where'd which, you come up with this from which kind it's of it's a question that people have been asking and it's a good you know it's a very it, techie it's well that's the thing that surprised me when i was reading down through those comments like they a lot of them do get very technical yeah. and i guess i took for granted it's like you know i just took for granted what you guys told us is what it is because <laughs> i know you you know you guys you your legal department wouldn't let you put out a claim that that isn't 120 percent accurate. You yeah, know no, what I mean? I'm, like, I'm sure our legal department's watching me right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, like, but no, everything's fully vetted and through that because we, we want to make sure that you know everything is backed up by data. You know, so we do a lot of testing, a lot of shooting with stuff to make sure that that stuff is true. You know, like mm-hmm. another one that comes up is the is the 30 30 comparison. You know, and you and we talked about this even prior to starting, but. Um, the biggest thing there and the biggest reason why folks maybe are a little confused is 3030 ballistics are typically published out of 24 inch barrel guns. The mm-hmm. thing is, is that most rifles that are in the field today are 20 inch barrel and 3030, the nature of the powders that are used in 3030, you lose anywhere from 160 to 200 feet per second when you shoot it out of an actual gun. So when we looked at 350 legend, we said, well, is it fair for us to tell people like, you know, 
this is compared to a 3030 versus a 350 legend. Um, how do we compare those two? Because in reality, the 350 is going to be shot out of a 20 inch barrel. Gun. Sure. We, we launched it in the XPR and you know, how does it real world compare to a three, a 30, 30, there's probably been more deer shot with a 30, 30 than any other mm -hmm. caliber. Everyone knows that it works on whitetail. <laughs> yeah. That's the deer that dad, that I had started with when I was a kid. I mean, that's just the gun we had, you know? Well, and actually when we looked at this, we thought 350 could be, you know, the modern day 30, 30 in a sense, yeah. you know, for those kids and for those <clears throat> folks who are just starting out great cartridge. Well, how does it compare? Well, we took 20 inch barrel guns, 30 30s and mm -hmm. we shot our deer season product through it and we get the velocity from that and again you have that velocity drop compared to your 24 inch barrel and you know it has less velocity and less energy than the 350 legend when you start comparing them that way and so you know you got apples to apples to apples yeah. kind of thing and it gets, <laughs> it gets way to bring it down into yeah. <laughs> it gets, normal guy terms i gotta dumb it I down know, for myself I know fruit <laughs> <laughs> i can talk fruit <laughs> it gets confusing particularly because a lot of new cartridges like even 450 bushmaster now they that most of those velocities are actual published less than 24 inch barrel gun it's like a 20 inch barrel uh, 300 blackout mm -hmm. oftentimes publishes them at 16 inch barrel and a lot of times if you look at the back of the box the ammo boxes they'll tell you what what the ballistics were and what yep. you were shooting it out like this says ballistics data generated from 20 inch barrels yep so you know that's that'll help you and, and the reason why 3030 hasn't changed 3030 has been around a long time sammy who really dictates a lot of the things when it comes to cartridges it's a Sammy cartridge. It has been for a long time. No one's going to really. What is Sammy? Um, it's really. It's an acronym yeah, for something. It, 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 it's the body that kind of we use and we're a member of that really, when you're generating new cartridges, we make mm -hmm. sure that they're safe and that they'll function. And um, Like a regulatory. Yeah, it's a regulatory body yeah. for our industry. And so, you know, we go by that, and that's what folks put on the back of their box. But when you create a new cartridge like this, you kind of are starting with a blank slate. So we decided, hey, look, we, we don't want to start off showing people 20, 24 inch barrel velocities with this thing. Mm -hmm. We want to show them what it's actually going to produce. Yeah. So it's a little bit like with IBOs in archery, you know, you get a 70 pound bow and shoot the lightest arrow that you can. And don't take us down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then you get people that are arguing about yeah. IBOs. It's like, what does it do? I know this. I've needs... never had a bow that actually shot what an IBO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's all it's, I know. It's, it's a totally different, like that's a lab setting yeah. type of uh, metric. But if everybody's comparing it against that, you have to then have a it's, standard. Yeah, then it's fair yeah. Game, so I, I mean, if you took the 350 and you shot it out of 24 inch barrel guns, you'll gain some even more velocity. So our published velocities on the back of our box would actually go up. But it's not real world for this cartridge, so that's yeah. why we didn't put it on there. So um, that's really where those those claims come from. Um, they're legit. I mean, they're they're we actually physically shot the 20 inch barrel guns through chronographs, just like we do the 350 legend. So, um, it, it you know when it comes to that too, you, you kind of look at you know energy penetration and all those things um, are claims. So you, you look at them. You look at penetration. So we talked about the 243. We talked about recoil, mm -hmm. um, and we talk about um, what's the other one. Energy, energy penetration oh, and recoil. Yeah, so yeah, you got we got them all. So um, your recoil is going to be similar, if not a little less than 30-30. And so, like, like this is – Trump was on – during a State of the Union talking about – it was he was mentioned something what there was a third of something here represented tonight and someone went back and did fact check and they're like actually it was 31 percent and and that's kind of like how i feel about this about the recoil claim that people are making because people are saying well people are people are complaining that the folks are saying that there's no recoil in this gun and there's obviously and some recoil it's, you it's know. a gun there are there's yeah. going to be some it, it, it's a term it feels like there's no recoil yeah. based on all the other guns you're used yeah. to shooting that's that's for sure and that's why we again that's why we made the claims that we do you're trying to compare it to something so yeah. folks get a just get a general feel to to your point the, the best way is just to go shoot it you know which mm -hmm. i mean at, at this point it's we're getting close. It's, a, it's hard you know you yeah. know, you'd have to know somebody that had one of those first guns that's just not really reality right now right it'll most likely be end of summer when you can start really getting your yeah, hands yeah i think that's what you know ideally we're going to have folks out there in the field shooting whitetail mm -hmm. with it this this fall that, yeah that's going to be you know 
great. And I think that we're definitely on the way there when it turns to firearms and ammo. Cool. So. Before we move past that 243 comment, yeah. the, the one that <clears throat> Tim had found here, it says the round was developed for women and children, outperform a 243 at, a t- at 200 yards. Bah, ha, ha, ha. If you believe that, I have some beachfront property in Arizona to sell you. So that's kind of you already know, you know he's discredited because we know that there's no oceanfront property there. There isn't. It's no. It's good. Him, him that, and George yeah. Strait yeah. <laughs> don't know their geography. No, again, you know we're trying to show some comparisons of existing cartridges yeah. through recoil, through penetration. Um, like I said, there there is more energy with a 243 simply because it starts with and has more velocity when it reaches 200 yards. Its effectiveness is great. I mean, we have plenty of uh, success with 243. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. and, and with all this, you know, whether we, we would probably talk about 450 Bushmaster a little bit and 243, but... We're not trying to say that this thing's going to supplant or replace anything. Yeah. You know, this is another tool for folks to go out and go after whitetail with, which yeah. that's another box that we were trying to check. Yeah. That, hey, this is another option for you to go out and try to chase something that is mild to shoot and affordable. So. Yep. Yeah. What about trajectory? So, like, do you suggest zeroing at 100 or 150? or? So, on all of this, on these boxes, um, We've zeroed them at 150, Mm -hmm. uh, simply because you can pretty much put it right on anywhere you want out to 225-ish, you know? You're still on the the animal at 250, Mm -hmm. which, you know, most folks, depending upon what scopes they have, you don't really want to be off the animal trying to hit them, you know? So if you zero it at 150, you can still be on the animal and hit the vitals. So that's kind of where we went with that. And, you know, that's kind of come from us doing a few things on our own. Like if you zero it at 100, um, you might be kind of low at 250. So Mm -hmm. 150 is kind of that sweet spot. That's the difference, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. Well, so what's next? It's you know, it's just it's interesting to see how passionate folks are about their and oh, I and, love it. I mean, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people geek out on this stuff, and it's it's just like anything. You just you know you you can go as deep into the rabbit hole as you want to. Um, folks get and, pretty deep in the rabbit hole sometimes. Yeah, but, well, that's you know, what that's, the internet's all about. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, that's every what, topic. That's what we're here for too, and you know, we encourage folks to you know post questions to you guys post questions to our website we got technical people i mean with this 350 thing we've got people looking at it all day long not saying we can answer every question yeah. immediately mm-hmm. it's pretty tough when you have 150,000 people that have looked at it yeah. and may have questions but what we've tried to do is go out there and answer some frequently asked questions we yeah. have that on our website to try to help you know maybe that answers your question and then you're done kind yeah. of yeah and we'll we'll include a link to those facts in mm-hmm. this and the, the notes of this podcast it's about like um why don't I have any sound on DeerCast? <laughs> <laughs> Turn your ringer on. <laughs> we get a lot of questions that uh, we see over and over That's again. That's an inside joke, Ben. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I have DeerCast. I love it. So. And you can hear all the videos. <laughs> I, I try to keep it off in the stand, but then if sometimes it's boring, then yes, I'll listen to it. Yeah. Well, f- you know, and for us, it was, it was a, on iPhone, especially when it launched, and it's still this way, if the, if your if your ringer switches off, there's no audio in the videos, and everyone felt a need to tell us that, and so well, we're like, well, okay, well. I get it. I mean, I guess if you're used to like if Instagram or anything, if you hit the volume button and even with your ringer off, it turns the vol the volume on. So I get it to an extent, but boy, it was the most frequently asked. We question. created a video <laughs> all about it. I don't know that many people watched it. <laughs> we still got the question. They couldn't hear it, but <laughs> <laughs> we made sure to subtitle it just for that. Very, Turn your ringer just on for that very reason. So. Yeah. So okay, so so we'll make sure that there's a link up so folks can get to the fact and they can okay. see because I'm sure that you guys you guys have kind of seen the the trends that are in the questions and make sure people have their questions answered. And if folks have questions, we'll put up a, a post in DeerCast and see if people have additional questions, and we'll try to get you guys. Make sure somebody's answering them from Winchester for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got a few more questions for you. This, yeah. this one guy asked. Uh, is a model 1894 going to be chambered for this? So that, um, you know, again, <clears throat> when it comes to guns, 
it's hard for us to decide, to determine who will do what. I mean, obviously sure. on the Winchester side, we know a little bit more. And I'm not saying that it'll never happen, but right now we're really heads down focused on the XPR. Um, it's good to hear all that kind of feedback, though, to kind of see, hey, what's next? What do people want? What are they yeah. looking for? Currently, we don't have any plans on the 1894, um, but doesn't mean that it'll never happen. Sure. Um, same was true for other folks too. It's hard for me to speculate what will happen with guns and who will build what. Yeah. Um, but we have had a lot of interest, which is great. So, you know, one of the one of the the viewers mentioned it seems like a resurrection of the three fifty one Winchester, mm-hmm. and so it's they're purporting that it's, this is not really a new. Mm-hmm. So uh, how much how much influence do you draw from previous cartridges and? Yeah, it's, it's kind of going back to that bullet board kind of thing when you're looking at different things up there and seeing what we've done in the past and, you know, why did some of them not make it kind of thing. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, there's actually quite a bit of difference between that and the 351. One, you know, and I didn't really know a whole lot of, you know, this deep of detail about it yeah. until I started doing some digging um, mm-hmm. because of all the questions. But the 351 actually is a 351 mm-hmm. diameter, 352 diameter bullet, which is... It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's definitely smaller than the bullets that we have here, which um, would potentially make them illegal in straight wall states. Hmm. Um, so you wouldn't be able to use that in a straight wall state in some. In some, if it's a 357, sure. there's some that are 350, but on um, the 357 ones, it's flat out not a 357 diameter bullet. And then um, also, it starts at a lower pressure. It, the, the level of pressure that you can achieve safely out mm-hmm. of the 351 is like. 35,000 PSI um, versus like 56,000 PSI on the 350 Mm. legend. So, and then it's also a little bit shorter. So you couple all those things together. It never can achieve the same velocity as the 350 legend. You're never going to have that kind of energy. (laughs) And also another thing, the 351 didn't have a lot of purpose built bullets. Again, it's was built a long time ago, very limited, um, offerings there and so you just didn't have a purpose-built whitetail bullet you didn't have a purpose-built yeah. hog bullet you didn't have an, an fmj round yeah you just had hey if you got one <laughs> yeah. one cartridge here and one load that's what you it. got you know yeah. so um times have changed you know this is um, definitely taking that performance like significantly more so like it's it's mm-hmm not really been done before i yeah. guess is what i'm saying um similar to but definitely a, a smaller version so and to the casual observer i mean they they seem like they would be very similar but you start talking about pressures and, mm-hmm. and energy and that's it's just a different story then yeah i mean when you start something from scratch like that and you know again today's day and age what rifles are capable of versus what they used to be mm-hmm. um it, you can kind of start from a different playing field over here you know we don't have to base it off of we're not going to use that cartridge we're not going to use that pressure you know characteristics we're going to use what we think can maximize the performance of this thing so we got a guy says i've watched four videos now on this new cartridge not one have they mentioned a very important factor feet per second so it makes me think it's a slow moving bullet why else wouldn't they mention it weird keeping it a secret yeah. well it's well, probably on the box it is it is and, it, and and all the ballistics are on our website too so if anyone is curious about yeah. you know trajectories how it how it performs at range um but just straight up the the muzzle velocity out of the 20 inch barrel so um deer season 23 25 so 2325 feet per second um powerpoint 180 grain, 2,200 feet per second muzzle, and the FMJ is 2,350 mm-hmm. feet per second out of 20-inch barrel. So, um, again, as, as barrel lengths go up and down, that can kind of change, but that's our 20-inch um, ballistics that we have on the back of the boxes. That's what's on our website. It, it's difficult to say everything about it. I mean, this is a great form because it's a little bit longer, but yeah. oftentimes when you're doing videos, you're trying to hammer out some yeah. key things, get people seconds. interested. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, hopefully people are still interested and still listening. Um, but, yeah, it's it's difficult to say all those specs. Sure. So. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. So anything that you want to cover that uh, maybe we haven't brought up so far that you're seeing, you know, as you guys are looking around on the Internet and seeing what people are saying or asking or having questions about anything else we need to cover? Well, one thing and we kind of covered where we came from with the claims on the um, recoil penetration and uh, 
and energy. But w another thing is, is it the fastest straight wall cartridge? Folks often get a question about mm -hmm. that. I think some folks have maybe taken that to um, a different place than where we were. We had kind of started with that. Where we were starting with that is, we are comparing mm -hmm. this in those states where straight wall cartridges are legal and there's definitely legal stipulations behind um, what you can use. So what's the bullet diameter? Uh, what's the shell case length that's legal? And then as well as, you know, the existing cartridges. So there's a lot of grandfathered in cartridges that are older cartridges like 4570, 444 Marlin, things hmm. like that. So we're comparing it to those cartridges. You know, you could build a five inch long straight wall <laughs> cartridge with a 50 cal bullet in it. It's going to have yeah. more velocity. It's going to be a faster straight wall cartridge. And could you hunt with it? You could hunt with it somewhere, but you couldn't mm -hmm. hunt with it in those states. So that's really where that comes from. It's a straight wall hunting cartridge within those states that have those kinds of um, lim sure. limitations. Within what's mm -hmm. possible, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that that, for some, may be confusing, but for the folks that, that li do live in those areas, that box that we're checking there, that's meaningful to them. Big you know? deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just saw, we saw the results there in mm -hmm. Iowa, what, what that meant. I mean... You know, it's just um, it's it's just a lot easier to be able to shoot this gun and and and, and ammo combo than mm -hmm. maybe you know getting the muzzle loader out and, and a lot of guys that that's a barrier to go out and hunt in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, they don't have a muzzle loader, they don't right. understand it, or they're just leery of it. Mm -hmm. And, and muzzle loading these days is pretty easy compared to what it used to be like, obviously. But mm -hmm. in general, that's a barrier, I would think, for sure. some hunters. So this opens it up in those states that, that it's legal. Yeah, and in those states, you know, they don't have, like in Iowa, you don't have a whole lot of straight wall options, um, you know, other than older cartridges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not been a lot of developments outside of 450 yeah. Bushmaster. So, and, and I'm not uh, passing by the fact that you can obviously shoot a slug gun there too. But sure. when yeah. you talk about distances, it, you can reach out and touch them a little bit more with this with this than say a slug gun. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and you know, and I I look back on because one of the things we did when we were doing this, we talked to a lot of the. Um, Nat Department of Natural Resources folks because mm -hmm. folks like yourself we want you to go out there but we don't want you to get in trouble we want to make sure that it's gonna it's gonna work <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be it. legal yeah. and you know and when we talk to the folks in Iowa I, re I remember distinctly he's like so what is it what is it I was like man I can't tell you I want to tell you but I can't he's like well, I'm really thinking about getting a 450 Bushman. I was like, well, you ought to get one of those, but you also want to get one of these too when we when we do it. So, you know, in, in after talking to him and he told we told him all about the specs and that met all the requirements, so we knew it was going to be all good. So, so yeah. all you could tell him were specs, and you couldn't tell him the yeah. actual name of the cartridge, and right? And so most of those states that you don't have to know the – because part of it is from what we gathered from a lot of them is there's a lot of folks that build wildcat cartridges and want to shoot deer with them and they have plenty of energy to be able to do that mm -hmm. in some instances so um, what a lot of them have done now is they basically stipulate the bullet diameter as well as the shell case length mm -hmm. and then they also grandfather in some of those older straight okay. wall cartridges because like i believe 4570 is even longer than the actual shell case length that's legal but it's grandfathered in as a straight wall. gotcha mm -hmm. and, and i know that mark had you guys had called the iowa dnr but mark also called it just to double check and so we we made sure and we dotted all our i's and crossed sure. our t's before we went and, and you know and, and executed <laughs> yeah and I, and, I, with it. and I would say to do that for anybody even if you're if you're worried about it i mean you know we went out and did our due diligence but you, you should always check your yeah. regulations yeah when it comes things to that. change yeah, yeah it's 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 not legal in illinois you know exactly which is a very similar state to iowa in a lot of ways but there's just regulation there that it does not meet and so we couldn't use it over there in yeah. illinois mm -hmm. if you shot it out of a pistol it would actually be legal in illinois but not many people do but yeah uh, you know that's, good point it but yeah there's there's definitely you know it, illinois is primarily a slug state yep. so mm -hmm. Wow. Great. Well, thank you for coming on the show and digging into some details. This was, this no, was I, great. Yeah, I appreciate it. I know, you know, there's a lot of detail there and there's a lot of stuff to cover. And, you know, I, I encourage <clears throat> folks to continue to ask you guys questions and mm -hmm. you guys bouncing stuff off of us because we, I, I mean, that, this is what it's all about for us, you know, coming up with something that we feel is going to help people out yeah. and people are going to have fun with. But we also want them to understand. Yeah what it is so you guys helping with us is great so. the, the excitement at the shot show from the industry was very high i mean it there was definitely a buzz about it there when you guys launched it yeah i mean i I've, I've been with winchester for going on 16 years and um 
you know, this was one of the most fun shot shows that I've gotten to participate in because of that. Because yeah. it's fun when you get to people coming up and asking questions. You know, yeah. It, You're the bell of the dance, right? <laughs> well, it, it, you know, I, I'm not saying that, but it's it's kind of like you, you, you recognize that this is something that people are interested in. You know, sure. and you recognize that people are seeing the potential usefulness yeah. of it. And knowing how it worked, you know, actually shooting something with it this fall, you guys shooting them. Like when we're getting videos from you guys, we're like – that's awesome because like <laughs> we hadn't seen anything shot with it melissa bachman shot some stuff with it and like yeah. slow motion video of it and you're just like that's what we, we want to see it. you know that's what we want to see because yeah. you you believe mm-hmm. that that's going to happen but you just never know until mm-hmm. you do it and you know and then you go to the show like that and you, you got all that stuff backing it up it's not really a theoretical thing anymore it's a real deal and you know and then also just folks like you know customers consumers everybody thinking man this is i could see how this is going to be a big deal and you know when you start shooting it yeah that's when you even see even more because it's like it's it's so comfortable to shoot and you're like okay i i could i could shoot this thing all day mm-hmm. you know i assume that was the reaction at the range day oh yeah i yeah. mean range day was awesome i mean we went through <laughs> a lot of ammo and, and oftentimes you know we're shooting the xpr it's a bolt rifle it doesn't yeah. run through ammo but they're running through it as fast as they can put it in there and <laughs> nice. we were filling up magazines for them and you know it those those dudes were pretty hot they probably have more r- rounds through them than uh, oh, you I might know. not want to borrow those to go out <laughs> shoot with now the barrel's drooping what yeah, is that <laughs> yeah but uh it it was definitely a popular thing and and again the, no one's shooting it off a lead sled they're all shooting it hmm. right off the shoulder pretty right cool off the shoulder so yeah. Which which just kind of, exp- you know, we talk about hunter recruitment, hunter retention, and this this cartridge has the, the potential to kind of widen out the functional years someone could hunt. It starts them a little earlier, you know, deer hunting. A later. Exactly. So, that I mean, that's, the implications are really significant. We, we let old man winter shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So Terry I'll can let shoot. you guys make fun of Terry. I'm not do that. <laughs> well, Stepping I know that he doesn't listen to podcasts, so <laughs> what I is think I'm pretty safe. <laughs> we have a podcast? <laughs> He's our guest that's never on here. <laughs> Now, where is this going? You just put up that, uh, that poster board up yeah. and you have him here. Yeah, we just stand him here. Like Terry. Two-dimensional Terry. Yeah. Welcome aboard. <laughs> cool. Well, Ben, thank you so much for, for joining and really digging in. And we look forward to watching the evolution of 350 Legend and seeing all of our dear casters' success with it. And we're honored to be, you know, part of the early totally. adaption of it. So yeah. it's it's legit, you know, and it, it made believers out of us. Because I remember, you know, Mark – when I, cause he wasn't at the summit with us with, with dad and I, and, and I came back and I had taken some photos and, and tried to explain it to him. He's like, okay. You know? And I, and I was kind of my reaction cause I couldn't sell it to him cause I didn't really understand it you either. You don't understand. This is so cool. And then once he shot it, once we, so we used it at the Missouri camp, uh, for that opening week in a Missouri firearm. And I think, I think maybe dad shot his a couple of days into that first week. And after that, we got it to Mark so they could use it down in Texas, and then they're in the second uh, shotgun season of, or second gun season there mm-hmm. in Iowa. I believe that that was the one. And he was just like, "Oh my gosh, guys, this thing's a game changer!" <laughs> and when you get Mark excited about something, that's you're onto something. You're, you are yeah. onto something. So it was cool. It was cool. We were very, very honored to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, it, we were super pumped because again, you, you guys. The, the critters that you killed were not small deer. Mm-mm. I mean, they're big bucks. Especially those Iowa white tails. Oh, yeah. You know, that's five, five, yeah. yeah, six-year-old deer or whatever they are, you know, and they're big corn-fed, you know. And, and that's the thing you worry about when you come up with something because, you know, you want to tell people that it's effective. And when you can only shoot gel with it, it's, it's kind of tough because mm-hmm. you're like, someone's going to go out and try to shoot something with this, and they're going to be upset with us because they – get a monster whitetail in front of them yeah. and they shoot it and they lose it, mm, you know? And yeah. it's like, and then they're done. Like they're not coming oh, back. Yeah, it's like ever. I, I don't trust that thing. Yeah, I don't see you that. Got, happening. You guys built a ton of trust, um, you know, and you got a lot of it on camera too, which is, which yeah. Is well, we, it's all on camera. Cause we killed a couple uh, does as well. I, I know at dad's place, I'm not sure if Mark and their group did as well or not, but mm. so there's probably were eight or nine kills, you know, that we, that yeah. we accounted for with the one gun. So yeah, it was, it was a fun fall with it. Yeah. We, we were very fortunate. Like a lot of our media hunts too went very well. The, the weather was great. The places that we went were great and it just, it kind of all stacked up really nicely to be able to get some pretty good, I'll call it data, but you know, yeah. um, it was, it was fun. I mean, I, 
again, we, we appreciate you guys. And, again, allowing us to do this, too, because, you know, we get to touch a lot of people who – We'll hopefully be shooting the 350 legend this fall so. sure well so if anybody out there has questions we'll make sure that ben's the one that gets on there and answers them all on the youtube comments section Personally. i'll probably be part of the process yeah. i would suspect so. yeah sweet all, all right. right all right well we appreciate you coming in thanks guys mm -hmm. yeah thanks a lot so if you want to subscribe to the show it's easy to do on apple podcast and stitcher and uh, the google play store you can also subscribe via youtube if you want to see what we look like while we're doing these conversations um, you can also catch the show over on deercast our mobile app that will revolutionize your deer hunting experience so make sure if you're not on deercast do download it. It's not just the the deer movement forecaster, but there's a news feed with all kinds of articles and videos and our entire VHS and DVD video libraries in there all the way back to Frankly, 89. there's as much use for it right now in the off season as there is during the season because of all the content. You get your fix. Absolutely. And as we kind of ramp up towards turkey season, look out, man. That deer cast is going to become turkey cast for a little bit. Not in the prediction model, but sure. in the content for sure. Live hunts and all kinds of stuff. Mark just posted some trail cam videos of turkeys and it's got me already in the he mood switched for his it. brain is like over. Oh, don't do this to me yet. they it's talk still... about left brain right brain but with mark it's just deer turkey <laughs> <laughs> I, don't He's in the I don't turkey. blame him I don't yeah blame. yeah so 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 do check out deer cast and you can get the show in deer cast in, uh, in the dod tv section all right well we appreciate everybody following along and as always uh, be safe out there and if you get a chance try to shoot some ammo <laughs> ben's like yes <laughs> please, please shoot a lot <laughs> We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DoD TV was brought to you by Winchester.